Hey, this is Aaron Lee from YT, and you are watching CMS TV. It's Electric Mob right here on your classic metal show with Devil You Know. And this sounds uh, very much like uh, almost like Slash a Snake Pit a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, that's that like Brazilian singer, I think. Yeah, he kind of he kind of has uh, the same kind of vibe that uh, Slash a Singer with. Uh, what, what? Uh, Eric Dover or the other guy? No, the, your friend. The oh, uh, Miles. Yeah, Miles Kennedy. Yeah, kind of. He's kind of got a Miles Kennedy sound to him, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I only heard 10 seconds when you oh. turned on the camera. I wasn't yeah. listening. Well, anyway, that, that goes out to uh, Greg Simpson, who wanted to hear uh, that. Okay. From Electric Mob. I'm not familiar with them, but I might check yeah. them out because I like that whole blues vibe. Yeah, I think they're from like Brazil or Chile or somewhere. All right. Fair enough. And then we heard some old grandpa rock with uh, Alice Cooper for uh, Jib Bartek or Jackal in the chat room with Billion Dollars Baby. Yeah, there you go. A 50 plus year old tune. Mm hmm. Because <laughs> that's when music was good, man. Last time it mattered. 1972, man. I was driving my gremlin with an eight track tape. <laughs> It's the last good album that was ever released, man. Yeah. <laughs> Up until Nostradamus. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, man. It's just this is like, dude, have a little open of mind. You know? Just yeah. there, there is some good stuff out there. There, there is. There really is. I you don't have to sell me. You know, uh, you know, some of the bands that you've turned me on to is just, you know, some of the some of the better stuff like uh, Rival Sons. Sure. And uh, what is one of your favorite, more favorite newer bands that released something recently? Dirty uh, Honey. Dirty Honey. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah, I love them. I mean, if, if you like that, that <sighs> classic uh, 70s mm -hmm. blues rock stuff. Uh, dirty honey i mean they're yeah. very talented i like those guys yeah dude pull up real quick uh gearish and the chronicles g-i-r-i-s-h and just p pick any i don't even care what song you play just pick one yeah there they are gearish and the chronicles yeah give give any one of those a play this is so your speed i cannot think of a band you might like better all right here's a here's a song called ride to hell all right all right let's take a listen Run! Run! 
You know, again, it's it's just fast, furious, hard melodic rock. Yeah, there's bunches of it out there. People just have to go look for it. Oh, well, here's here's the problem, though. Mm-hmm. This this is the problem with people who have closed minds. Mm-hmm. In, in I, I hate to keep using this term, but it's very appropriate. Back in the day. Mm-hmm. And there was a media out there that celebrated or promoted certain talents out there. Right. That made their names a household name. If these guys, I don't know anything about them because it's the first time I'm hearing about them. Yeah. If these guys had existed 35 or 40 years ago, they might have been featured on MTV oh, they'd have been or, massive. or commercial radio or something. And maybe one or two of their band member names have been thrown around out there. And like, uh, oh, me. And again, I don't know anything about this band. Meet so-and-so from Garish and the Chronicles. It's like, oh, man, they're the second coming of Richie Blackmore, man. Yeah. You know, and and the thing is, is unfortunately in today's day and age, there are no outlets that promote individual rock stars. Yeah. And they may be as talented, if not more talented Mm -hmm. than their predecessors. Yeah. But you'll never know their names and you'll never know their faces and you'll never know anything because there's no... um, what do you want to call segregated media out there that will uh, promote anybody like that? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just sad. And they could be better if, you know, they could be as innovative, if not better than the heroes that you worship. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're a great band. They're a great one, but there's lots of them that are out there. People are just, I mean, the, the truth is, is that the, the people that have sheltered their lives, that's just it. They've sheltered their lives. They've put right. up the boards on the windows. They've uh, locked their doors. Anytime Spotify recommends them anything, it's got to be from 1975 or they won't even click it. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's well, like. Well, you can't just appreciate it for, the, for yeah. what it is. And it's like, yeah, this is in the vein of what I like. Yeah. Dino's no, hitting. No, it's got to have a name and it's got to have recognition. Mm-hmm. It's got to have, uh, you know, something attached to it. And if they're yeah. not credible, fuck them. They're posers and mm-hmm. they're garbage and I'm never going to listen. And <sighs> Yeah, exactly. It's just whining. Here's another one. Pull up um, uh, Jalusic, J-E-L-U-S-I-C-K, and his current, his new album called Follow the Blind Man. And play like Died or Animal Inside, one of those tunes. Okay. Either one, it doesn't matter. Or any of the tunes, really. This guy is so fucking good. And anybody that likes Whitesnake would love this band. But most of them are old and too fucking lame to actually check it out. All right. So did you say Died or Animal Inside? Either one. All right. Here we go. So people with white snake ears on. Yeah. It's not David Coverdale, man. It's the guy that David Coverdale picked to be his replacement. It's not Adrian Vandenberg, man. Nope. It's, it's, it's not John Sykes, man. Nope, it's not. <laughs> it's actually good. very zeppelin-esque mm-hmm. in the in the uh you know the chord progression yeah right. yeah kind of going to california right a little little thicker than that but yeah mm-hmm. that's similar going to california with an aching in my heart <laughs> zeppelin man yeah asshole they don't hold a candle to page man yeah i 
could tell by the first six notes it was no page, man. Yeah, Greta Van Fleet sucks too, even though they're selling out stadiums, man. Holy shit, dude. If, <laughs> if somebody played this for me and said this was the white snake, I would have gone, holy fuck, that's excellent. I thought Jimmy Cardinal <laughs> was having vocal problems and it's like, yeah, he got he got uh, John Sykes back in the band. Can you yeah. it? And I would have gone, holy shit, that's fucking cool. It's this is a great record. This yeah, is I, up there for album of the year. Yeah, and, and and again, it's just like, man, I'm not listening to this, man. Yeah. yeah this is so good. Yeah, fuck this, man, because <laughs> it's not the original. That's right. Posers, they're just trying to sound like something cool. <laughs> So, so I couldn't tell if this was David David Coverdale or Yorn Land. Yeah, and it's neither. <laughs> I know that's the whole thing. And I would listen to this, and I'm and I'm not going to sit there and have hero worship. No, I'm just going to go. Yeah, this is the kind of music I like. Yeah. It's good stuff and it's it's it's, it's a gambler man yeah man yeah fuck that i'm not listening to that yeah <laughs> i only want to hear wine and women or whatever that song yeah, is who's even in the band is there like a name that i could put to this is there a yeah. notable figure like no bernie marsden no white snake yeah fuck that <laughs> That doesn't sound like Cozy Powell. No, doesn't hack drummer. He doesn't have the chops that Cozy had on drums. No. I can tell right away that's not Cozy Powell. He's not even using the same kind of sticks. I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever the singer is, he probably didn't get his hair cut the same way as Coverdale anyway, man. Yeah, he can't be real. He wasn't on that rocks. Yes, he banging Tawny Catane's yeah. corpse. Corpse. <laughs> If he's not her name was Tawny, right? Yeah, if he's not fucking Tawny, he's not worth a shit. I'm yeah. not listening to this album, man. Poser faggot. Yeah. There's gotta be a name attached to this man. Yeah, man. Can't be good on its own merits because no. I won't accept that. That's right. It's gotta have a name like John Lord or Richie Blackmore or Ian Pace or somebody like that. This shit wouldn't have cut it in the good years like the 60s. Yeah, man. This would have not translated over an 8-track tape on some kind of a audio technics yeah. uh, stereo, man. This isn't warm like a warped album, is it? <laughs> Shot it. Fuck it. I'm not listening to any more of this. Yeah, play some 1973 Alice Cooper again. Yeah. <laughs> Billion dollar babies. That's when it all ended. Yeah. No shit, man. Life has gone downhill since Buddy Holly died. Yeah, man. <laughs> Starts and stops with the big bopper, motherfucker. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to play Died. All right, go ahead. 
in honor of Buddy Holly. <laughs> about this Jalusic guy. Yeah. But whoever wrote and arranged his music, just, yeah. just fucking aggressive. That's him. He, yeah. he did it. He did it himself. Good for him. Yeah. I mean, he's got guys that are playing, but he, sure I know for are. a fact that he wrote it because this is his answer to, he, he had a dispute with frontiers. He was no on prize. No yeah. Shit. I know. Shocking. Right. But he, um, he left Frontiers, and this is his first effort by himself. He was in that band Animal Drive. Okay. That was, like, up and down in, like, 30 seconds. But now he's out doing it himself. But it's this fucking record is great. Yeah, it's, it's got a great sound. It's got a great production. It's, mm -hmm. it's just got an in-your-face, uh, aggressive, melodic yeah. rock. And he's great. His vocals are fucking untouchable. Yeah, all right. It's very clear why David Coverdale tapped him to back him up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he he is clearly David Coverdale-esque in everything that he does. They probably on some of the gigs just turned off Coverdale's microphone and had him run around and had this guy singing. I have no no doubt about that because he sounds he's a dead ringer. Yeah, I, I mean, between him and Yorn Land, it's the, they, they're both dead ringers yeah well when i saw that this guy joined white snake as the keyboard player i was like get the fuck out of here yeah he, he, he's like the derek sherinian of keyboard players he's like yeah. behind the curtain don't, yeah. don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain <laughs> singing all the lyrics yeah that David coverdale is lip syncing he's not singing he just likes the songs right <laughs> Well, I will definitely check both of these bands out. Yeah, you'll like them both. They're both I, really I, I good. Like what I've heard so far. Yeah. And there's tons of them out there. You just have to. Well, they don't have a name attached to them, so That's I'm true. not listening to them. That's true. Yeah, they don't have a guitar hero or somebody that's recognizable like Rob Halford. I'm not listening, man. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that. If commercial radio didn't feed it to me and told me what was good, then I'm not listening then to it's it. It's not good. That's no. right. No, fuck that. That's right. You know, you know, if WMMS didn't say it was good back in the 70s and the 80s, I'm not <laughs> listening to it. Fuck it. <laughs> If I didn't hear from Jeff and Flash, it's clearly shit. Yeah. <laughs> Screw that shit. I'm not listening to new stuff. If it didn't come from Len Boom Boom Goldberg's lips, it means nothing. Yeah, if Trapper Jack was imprinted on this <laughs> show, I'm not Jack. listening to it. Either. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Trapper Jack. Holy Trapper smokes. Jack, man. <laughs> Now that's old school. I know, of course. <laughs> Some people might get that reference, but that's right. <laughs> I'm not listening to that. That's right. 
Yeah, screw that new stuff, man. They're just posers. Yeah. <laughs> they they couldn't possibly have talent. No, no way. No way. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. But uh yeah, I, I, I enjoy that. I'm gonna check those those guys out. All right. Oh, by the way, and yes. not that this is any big news or anything, so I'm not I'm not quite the guy like you who yeah. who's got to have the latest and greatest gadgets ever. Okay. <laughs> Cuz I know when new gadgets come out, you you got to get your yeah. hands on it and got to buy it. Yeah. So I don't I'm not a slave to my phone and I'm you know obviously I'm not on social media and I don't care about that garbage and I'm not a big tech guy and mm-hmm. other stuff. So Regardless of that, uh, <laughs> people are going to laugh and they're going, hey, you're fucking lame, man. Okay. But I, I'm going to, I'm going to pull back the curtain again. So the last iPhone that I had mm-hmm. was a, was a iPhone six, Oof. iPhone six S. Okay. Because I didn't care. I mean, it, it, I yeah, well, you don't use apps. What do, what difference does it make to no, you? I, I don't, and I don't care. Yeah. But my battery was dying on it. It okay. just wasn't holding the charge and so on and so forth. Well, gee, after 13 years, I can't imagine that. Well, I, I think I got it in 15. Okay, so it's been, you know. Eight years? Eight years that I held on to my phone I, because it worked. It worked fine. It did what I needed it to do for what I use it for. It's like, right. well, why do I need to get an upgrade every other year? And oh, I need the eight. I need the 10. I need the 12. I need the 14. Now I need the 15. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't care because whatever, but right. I, the, the, I went to the iPhone store, the AT&T store mm-hmm. and picked up the uh, 14 pro. That's what I have. Yeah. I have, I have the pro max, but yeah. yeah. Well, I don't have the max, but I got the 14 pro mm-hmm. and I picked it up this week and it, it's just like the success in my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> it, does, it does the exact same thing, <laughs> but it's got a better, a better battery, right? Yeah, It does have a great battery. Yeah. So it's got a better battery. So I picked that thing up and you know, obviously, uh, I use it in my car as far as like, uh, connecting it to my Apple play in my car mm-hmm. and I listen to Spotify and listen to rumble and listen to some YouTube stuff and blah, blah, blah. Right. That, Cause that's how I listen to quote unquote radio. Sure. Cause I don't listen to, you know, terrestrial radio or Sirius or Sirius XM or anything. I, I just use my phone yeah you know and that's how i listen to music or podcasts or whatever it is that i listen to i i connect it to my car and i listen through my phone right and that's the way people listen i i would i would assume a lot of people listen that way oh yeah Mm -hmm. so you know i will pull up these bands on my spotify and listen to this shit my car sure you know, because I don't have a 1974 Gremlin with me. <laughs> Your eight track player long since died. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually listen to current stuff on my phone. And that's right. And I'm, you know, when you bring stuff up like this, I'm always glad. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go check those guys out. I'm going to check that band out. Sure. You know, well, while, while you're checking stuff out, you yeah. might want to check out the Dirty Shirley record that George Lynch did because Joe Lusick was the singer on that, too. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, it, that's a real good record too. Okay. Actually, so, all right, fair enough. One of those, one of those good ones mixed in with the bad ones with Lynch. Yeah, <laughs> like the current ones. Yeah, not a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what. To, am I wrong on that one? I mean, no. I told you my thing on it is just. It it just doesn't it just doesn't pop. It just like. Uh, yeah. It's not terrible. It just oh. doesn't grab you. It's like fishing with a needle instead of a hook. Right. There's nothing that touches you. Or, you know, it just kind of lays there. There's something missing. I don't know if it's Gabe's voice because he sounds good. I mean, he's clean. He, he, he sounds right. Lynch sounds fine. Everything sounds fine. But it, it's just bland. 
yeah, there's just something missing on it. It, it just doesn't like, like, ugh. yeah. I mean, it's okay. It's a solid six, I guess, but you know, it just doesn't do much. I, I, I've listened to it a bunch of times looking for that song. Yeah. Lo, lo, looking for what, what is it I'm missing here? Yeah. And I keep looking, I'm like, Oh, if I find one song that catches me, maybe I'll get it. Yeah. But I've listened to it easily a half dozen, dozen times. And I, it just ain't. Is it the mix? Is it the engineering? Is it the, I think it's the songs. It's just, cause I can listen to it out. Look, I, I'm the guy that found a decent song or two on St. Anger for God's sakes. Sound is not always the, 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 the determiner for me. But there's just not a song there that I'm just like, all right, this is wicked sensation. You, you this is river make, of love. You just couldn't make a connection at all. Yeah. Just not feeling it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. No. Yeah, so wanted to like it. My, my, my new friend, uh, Giancarlo Floridia worked on it. So I want to like it. And who is that? He was the, um, he was the guy that we killed from that band Faith's Edge. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. But now me and him are actually friends. So All right. well, fair enough. Look at that. And he worked on it with Lynch. He like did a lot of the writing and stuff with, with George, but I'm just not finding that one song. Okay. All right. So, so you just couldn't connect. Yeah. Just, that's why I sent it to you and asked you if you heard anything. I that heard it and I listened to it and I was just like, I don't hate it, but then yeah. it, there's nothing about it that just like, eh. mm -hmm. and yeah. that's one of those here today, gone later today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly true. Right. But especially with Lynch, he'll have 10 more projects by the end of the month. Of course. So, all right. All right. Well, you want to do this video and then get out of here? Yeah. All right. So, so I, I picked this out because you and I, as old men now, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I hate to even say this, but I'm going to just say it because I, I, I'm just going to have to embrace it. Mm -hmm. um, what is this? Uh, October 28th? Yes. So in two months on Christmas mm -hmm. Day. Yeah. I am going to turn 60 years old. All right, Gramps. 60 years old. Yep. You know, still banging a 29 year old, but regardless of that, uh, 60, you and I, you, you turned 55 yesterday mm -hmm. and we both work hard. Yeah. You work hard. You, you work 16 17 hours a day i'm gone i leave the house at seven i don't get home till six i'm gone 11 hours a day mm -hmm. i do this stuff i do the life coaching stuff mm -hmm. you know we we work we yeah work. that's what we do but our work allows us to have the lifestyle that we have right <laughs> all right demon <laughs> but our work allows us to have the lifestyle that we have right mm -hmm. we, we can own a home we can go places do things uh have this show because the show is not supported yeah because we pay for this and all this other stuff but now we have a whole generation of people who are complaining that the fact that they have to work for a living. Mm -hmm. So here it is. A recent graduate said she had little time for her personal life while working a full-time job. Now here, here's the problem with social media, in my opinion. Okay commenters came out in support of the TikToker and said they could relate to the same and here's the word i hate worse than anything and i've been saying this for a lot of years if you go back through the cms i use this word in a very mocking tone they can relate to the same feelings <laughs> 
feelings. Mm-hmm. Uh, the forty the forty hour work week is much discussed co- topic on TikTok. With some calling it to be reformed. How are you going to reform the forty hour work? Week? They're going to make it thirty two. That's that, there, there's real talk of that. I'm aware of that, but so the here's the thing: a guy like you, you don't have a work week. No, you, you work because this is what makes you money. Mm-hmm. And you work 17 hours a day. You work 10 hours a day. You work 24 hours a day. If that's what it takes to get the job done. Yeah. But I want to succeed. I don't want to be a slave to somebody else. Right. Viewers rallied. Did they rally around a graduate? Sure. They gave a thumbs up. Did they did they rally around her? Heart emoji, Neely. Heart emoji. Really? Was it like a covered wagon? Rally mm. the wagons. Save me from the the uh, the the venomous uh, Native Americans who were putting you know sending their slings and arrows your way. That's right. Uh, viewers rallied around a graduate who said she was upset. Mm-hmm. My God, she was upset about her first office job out of college <laughs> because of the lack of time she had for her personal life sure. or, or basic chores by the time she got home. Yeah. Well, I get up at I get up at before six in the morning. Now, mind you, I'm 59 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm up before six in the morning Mm -hmm. i'm out the door by seven i get back in the door at six and i get up and do it again yeah then i do life coaching in the evening when i get home for my clients yeah then i do this show six hours on a saturday night right and then i go out on the road and and periodically run around with bands and do various things sure but but my life is shit Mm -hmm. because because i'm gone 11 hours out of my day to make the bulk of my living you're gonna hate my answer to this you're gonna really hate my answer to this and i know it okay while she's a fucking crybaby twat bag and she definitely, I've seen this video. We we talked about it a little bit on the Seth show. Oh, did you? We I, did, a little bit. I wasn't aware of this. Yeah, which is fine, because you, you'll probably want to discuss my thought on this. <laughs> I don't blame her. Chris, yes. don't make me hate you. <laughs> no, well, I don't care if you hate me. It's fine. But I don't blame her. Yes. I blame us. No, the parents. The par- yeah, our generation that raised this generation. Yeah, I agree. not me and you. Oh no, no, I'm gonna agree yeah. with you. I'm the, gonna agree with you. The the problem with this, and she and again, I totally agree she's being a dumb twat. Just fucking do your job. But we were raised for achievement. This generation is the participation trophy generation. They're not, nowhere in this, and we'll play it in a minute, nowhere in this minute and a half of her whining does she say, she says all the things, I can't date, I can't fucking, I'm tired, it's too many hours, I got got an hour-long commute, all this stuff that she says. Know what she never says in here? There's no way for me to succeed. Right. There's no way for me to get ahead. This isn't a job that's going to lead me somewhere. It's just, it's like the business is only there to fund her life. And the reality is the business doesn't give two fucks about how her life is. Nope. Other than her showing up. And let's face it. She's did I not read that she's a marketing person? Yeah. That's her degree marketing. Right. So you got a de- you got a degree in social media. <laughs> Guess what? You're going to get what you get, which ain't a whole lot. Considering <laughs> every dumbass has social media, you got a degree in being a dumbass. You're not going anywhere. But she doesn't she doesn't even look at the opportunity as an opportunity. 
She's only looking for, I need, I have to go somewhere to fund my life. Well, it's immediate gratification. Yeah. Immediate. Not, I don't want to work up to it. I just want it handed to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I blame us because we, we raised this. Well, I didn't raise this. I didn't bring our generation as well. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you there, but I didn't bring any children into the school. Not that I know of it. (laughs) Oh, if my kids acted like this, they'd get a firm backhand. My kids would never, my kids know, but all three of my kids work hard. All three of them work hard because they were raised to achieve. Yeah. They were moving bricks from one side of the yard to the other. Yeah. They misbehaved. That's right. <laughs> As it should be. And you know what? They didn't misbehave a whole lot. Right. They weren't sitting around waiting for me to give them the next thing. Here's your participation trophy, Zach. You did well by showing up. Ugh. And that's what this girl, she's a participation trophy. If ever there was one. Well, just, just for the record, uh huh. I wouldn't even fuck her. Oh, I would. <laughs> she's definitely, you don't think she's cute. I'm making a joke here. Oh, oh. That, that because, because she's of her, because of her attitude and her outlook. I, oh. I wouldn't even fuck her. Yeah. Cause I know she's old for you, but <laughs> 22. Viewers rallied around a graduate who said she was upset. Right. Well, we can't allow her to be upset. No. About her first office job out of college because of the lack of time she had for her personal life Mm -hmm. or the basic chores by the time she got home. On October 19th, the TikToker named Brielle, who recently started a corporate. First of all, what's her name? B R I E L L E Brielle Brielle. All right. That's the first indicator of how she was raised. Yeah, of course. <laughs> she, she's elevated among the Marys and the Janes yeah. and, and the Nancy's. She's yeah. Brielle. She's Brielle. She's Brielle. She's, <laughs> she's elevated. She's that's right. She's Brielle. <laughs> Shut up. Guarantee you there was a fucking Biden Harris sign in that fucking parents front uh, yard. Of course there was. Uh she uh started a corporate job in the New York area. She posted a video where she appeared to be visibly upset. Oh. She was visibly upset. That makes me sad. She addressed the camera, i.e. her iPhone yeah. that her parents probably bought for her. She has a job now. Well, prior to this, I'm sure she had the <laughs> iPhone. The, the on caption screen read in a nine to five, how do you have time for your life? Yeah, and again, mm-hmm. this whole thing with uh, this is my social life. I need to have time for this. Yeah. In the upload, Brielle, who asked, that insider only use her first name to protect her privacy ah her privacy didn't happen you're out all over the internet now brielle yeah you put it on tiktok yeah that it was her first job out of college and that she worked from the office which meant she had to commute holy shit you're kidding forbid she had to commute into Mm -hmm. the city even though it took her forever Oh, my God. Because she couldn't afford to live there. Oh, my God. I, dr- I drive 50, out, 50 minutes every day each way. Mm-hmm. But you're old. You're supposed to. I guess I'm supposed to. She said she got on the train at 730. I leave the house at 7, okay? And didn't get home until 615. I get home at 6. Uh, at which point she said, no time or energy to cook dinner or oh. work out. The nine to five schedule. So she leaves at seven thirty, and she starts work at nine. I start work at eight. Yeah. The nine to five schedule and the commute wiped out her days. She said. Mm-hmm. At the start of the video, the TikToker said she was probably just being so dramatic and annoying. Yeah, I agree with that. You kind of like shrunk my chubby for you, bitch. 
and acknowledge your situation could be worse. Yeah, you could live in Cambodia. You yeah. could you could live in Iran. You could live in Israel or the Gaza Strip right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's not as bad as nine to five. No way. She said she could be working even longer hours, but questioned how people were supposed to make time for friends or to date. Well, I, don't know. I worked all my life. Yeah. I've been working. Literally, I have been working since I was 10 years old. Here's one of the biggest problems with this generation. Yes. They have it somehow ingrained. And I don't know how this happened. I don't know. I don't know anybody that's my age that lived this way. So I don't know how they got this in their head. But even my kids have this in their head. And I don't know where it came from. They think that you have to get eight hours of sleep or more. At least eight well, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I, I'm going to pull the curtain back again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I run around with Taylor. Yeah. Who is half my age. Right. And I go into the city as much as I don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But I go into the city. She and I go to dinners. We go to shows. I hang out with her. Sometimes I will leave her apartment at one or two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Drive 40 and minutes back. I will drive 40 to 50 minutes home. Right. We'll get home by two, three o'clock in the morning, get up at six and go to work. Yeah. Turn and burn. And I just do that. Mm -hmm. And it's just part of life. That's just what I yeah. do at 60 years old. I go, I get up at six in the morning, even after I got home at two in the morning. Yeah. Because I was out at a concert or out hanging out for dinner or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I leave this, I leave the city of Chicago at two o'clock in the morning. I get home by three, get three hours of sleep and I'm up and back to work. Yeah. That's how it goes. I don't remember a time in my, and, and I mean, that's going out, but I'm just saying, even being in, I don't remember a time in my life that going to bed before midnight, no matter what time I started my job was a thing. Do you, I mean, do you, do you, I know, I know you go to bed sometimes earlier, but do you regularly go to sleep before midnight? No. Uh, yeah. But I, but you know, and again, when I lived in California, when I lived in Southern California, mm -hmm. which, which was the time of my life. Sure. I worked 12 hours days. I, I started work. I started work at seven, which yeah. means I had to leave the house at six 30. Mm -hmm. I worked from seven until seven. Right. Got home at seven 30. Mm -hmm. Then I would go to the club. I would go till like midnight or one. Yeah. Go back to go back home, go to sleep till six and do it all over. Again. Yeah. I mean, you had to, that was what we did. And that's what we did. And not only that, but, but I banged, uh, you know, a couple of chicks in between there. Yeah. You know? And that's what you did as a, as a young male. Yeah. You were out there rocking and rolling and banging chicks and enjoying life and making your money and you turn around and do it again. Yeah. I mean, dude, when I was working out in, at Eaton out there in East Lake, yeah. I used to work six 30 in the morning till two 30 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Then I would go from there over to Domino's and I would deliver Domino's until about seven or so. Right. Seven, eight o'clock till the dinner rush finished. But except for on Fridays, when I would go home at 2.30, take a nap, and have to be back at fucking Eaton to do a 12-hour shift from 9 to 9, 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So I'd work twice in the same day every single Friday. Right. And I did it because I needed to make money. I needed to. So you worked in Macedonia? No, uh, East Lake. Oh, East Lake. Okay. Yeah. Out there. And, and, and you know, from here, me who, me who driving down the street is, is a, is a drive. The chore. East Lake's pretty far. 
that's a pretty good haul for me. What's that, about 40 minutes? Mm -hmm. 40 minutes each way. And sometimes I did it er, once a week. I did it twice in a day. So that's what three hours of driving on top of on top of 20 12 and 8 20 hours of work in a day right <laughs> that's 23 of the 24 hours right so stop complaining sweetheart <laughs> it's just like that's what people did as as a young person yeah you, you, i'm going to use a black and blue reference you heat it up and burn it out <laughs> yeah well, as a young person, you have that you have that juice, and you use that juice to get yourself further along, so that you don't have to do it anymore. Right. You know. You know uh, granted, my life is not as as hard as it used to be. Yeah. And and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be exclusive here in a minute. I'm gonna tell you that uh, I have house cleaners who come in and clean sure. my. I pay them to clean my house and I have, uh, I hire people out to do some of the shit that I don't like to do. Mm -hmm. But at this age in my, you know, at this stage in my life, at my age, I've earned that Yeah, where I can afford to do that. Yeah. You earned it. How? By working these fucking crazy hours when you were 20. <laughs> yeah. She's just entitled. She's yeah, just an entitled twat bag. All right. At the end of the video, the TikToker said she was probably just being uh, so dramatic and annoying and acknowledged her situation could be worse. She said she could be working even longer hours. Oh, my. How people were supposed to make time for friends or yeah. to date. I don't have time for anything. And I'm like so stressed out, yeah. she said, toward the end of the video. The upload appeared to resonate. It's received 1.2 million views and more than 7,300 comments. Wow. Many wrote that they could relate to the situation as they shared that they too had limited time for their own <sighs> personal lives and found their repetitive routine difficult mm. to deal with. The 40 hour a week is beyond outdated. Oh my God. Your feelings are totally valid. Uh, others echoed how hard it was to work a full-time job while staying on top of household tasks. Mm -hmm. Well, if you worked harder and made more money, you could have somebody do your household tasks for you. Yeah. Let alone trying to maintain a personal life. Some question how they were supposed to one day make time to raise kids. Well, block that out because we don't want you breeding. Yeah, really. As they spent more time at work than they did with their families, the Gen Z need to collectively move up to, to here. Here's the here's the funniest goddamn thing. Gen Z need to collectively move up into the management positions and then collectively enforce the four day work week. Yeah, a mentor worked out. Well, how does that work out on the uh, bottom line? Yeah, you'll be collectively unemployed. <laughs> Because if you're taking out, you know, they don't even look at the fact that you're taking out 20% of your of what you can output. Right. So to do that automatically takes off 20%. And, and again, and if you're a uh, publicly held stock, mm -hmm. people want to have their equity increase, not by yeah. somebody going, well, we should only work uh, 30 hours a week and... Yeah productivity should fall because we just don't want to work too hard yeah well here's another news flash when you do do that four four day work week guess what else is going to get cut your pay if you're making a thousand dollars a week you just now made eight hundred dollars a week you just you just cut your pay by 20 percent. you dumb shit right why would i pay you more for less hours why would i do that <laughs> Brielle told the insider in an email statement, ah. I'm very grateful to have my job after five months of unsuccessful searching after college, but it's discouraging and understandable why Americans are burnt out and mental illness levels are high. Oh, stop. <laughs> mental illness. Stop it. 
I don't know. Somehow I've, I've uh, survived over 50 years without mental illness, at least yeah. not that I'm aware of. And I hope, Chris, as my friend, you would let me know if you think I'm mentally ill. Not recently. I mean, because I don't know. You, you I work so hard. I've met, I'm mentally ill. You do ask, kiss that Don Dockin an awful lot. Maybe there's <laughs> mental illness there. Let me ask the, let me ask the fan group. <laughs> Adding that she felt unfortunate. She felt fortunate to have a job she was interested in and enjoyed, but she was concerned that many office workers weren't finding time to enjoy the sunlight and the exercise and adequate sleep and healthy eating and forming connections with people. Yeah. Wow. People the, the, see this chick is so into the social media. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I should just be able to enjoy life and just yeah. relax. Mm -hmm. I should just be able to coast through. Somebody I, should pay I, I me just wanna, to. I want to remind her what, as much as I don't enjoy their music or their message or whatever, but there was a Canadian band called Loverboy called Everybody's Working for the Weekend. <laughs> yeah, not her. And that was the whole thing. It's just like, yeah, you work hard through the week and you get 48 hours off. Yeah. Because everybody's working for the weekend. That's right. That's the whole thing. You get you work five days, you get two days off, and you hopefully either rest up, party it out, or whatever it is that you do. Yeah. But you got two two days to figure it out. Whether um, you sleep or party or whatever, but that's how it works. Well, maybe Taylor Swift will sing for that third day off or something. Maybe we can get that to get the movement rolling. Yeah. The 40 hour work week is a must discussed topic on TikTok, TikTok, which uh, a certain term that has 4.42.8 million views and features videos from uploaders calling for it to be reformed, highlighting the lack of financial reward despite working the full time schedule or parroting those who push for longer hours. Yeah, great. Not going to happen. Yeah. So you've got to work. you got to work to achieve and be successful. That's how it works. 40 hours was established as the bare minimum. Yeah. 40 hours was established to be the bare minimum to earn a quote-unquote full-time wage. Why would you get full-time money for less work? Basically, by eliminating that one day, I got to hire fucking more people. Well, the whole thing is we're owed that. Yeah. No, you're not owed shit. I own businesses. I don't care about you. Not even a little bit. Yeah. Live on the streets, bitch. Yeah. I'll get the next person that does want the money that I'm. All you are to me is the fucking recipient of my ATM card. Yeah. That's it. You do something, I give you money. Yeah. I don't give a shit if you've got a boyfriend. Yeah. I, I could give two fucks. Oh, you didn't get to see the sun today? Suck it up, buttercup. Don't care. Pedal, pedal your young puss for money. That's right. Go on OnlyFans. Stretch oh. those flappers out and let's see what you got in there. That's worth something. So, um... Do you have the video there of her right whining here. and complaining? And she's like, I'm so stressed out. I can't take it. Yeah, it's so sad. All right. It's so very, very, very sad. But, yeah, here she is. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college. And I. I'd like to stress the point that she's, even in her whining, she's laid out on a couch. <laughs> With a big pillow behind her, so she's nice and comfortable while she complains. Well, that's her parents' house. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I'm in person, and I'm commuting in the city, and it takes me fucking forever to get there. Forever. There's it no way I'm gonna be able forever. Yeah, it does. How 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 long is fucking forever? About an hour. <laughs> I agree with that part. 
All right. You know me, Mr. Drive. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I do that every day and I just listen to my Spotify and listen to ONA and I listen to whatever. And that 40 or 50 minute hour yeah. drive goes, goes by. by very quick. Mm hmm. Dude, good tunes. Even when I used to commute, a good CD player settled that hour real quick. Sure. That's all I needed. But, all right, here we go be able to afford living in the city right now so that's off the table like fucking duh if i was able to walk to work and it, it'd be fine but i'm not so it literally oh fucking duh if i was able to walk to work it'd be fine well you're not would it would it be fine yeah well you're not so that's the end of that discussion all right really takes me like i leave here like look look look, she's got tears in her eyes yeah she's very sad she's tearing up Mm -hmm. no she's she's feeling the emotion and we we as tiktok viewers should somehow relate and go oh that's okay yeah Let, let me let me just put it to you this way and I and I know people know this, but they never voice it. If these girls didn't have pussies, we would never talk to them. No, never. And I know you've said that before. But I have. That's the that is the matter of fact. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have a pussy, we would never talk to you. Yeah. But since you do, we'll be the ones sitting there going, "Yeah, you're right." Oh. Let's reform. Let's reform whatever you need. <laughs> and I'll suck my balls. Right. <laughs> All right, here we go. I get on the train at 7.30 and I don't get home till like 6.15 earliest. <sighs> and then like, God. I don't have time. Oh my God. God. This is tragic. I'm out 11 hours. <laughs> Holy shit. My life is over. Right. I'm out 11 of 24 hours. I can't fit anything else in. It's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> yeah. There's only 13 more hours in the day that I can use. But those 11, that, that takes care of everything. All right. I it's do not that. even half a day. I do that every day. Yeah, of course. All right. Here we go. I'm to do anything. I don't. I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Like I don't have energy to work out. Like that's out the window. Like why do we care? Who the fuck are you? Because mom has your dinner on the table when you Mm. get home anyway. So what are you worried about? Well, maybe mom's making her put the burrito in the microwave, (laughs) (laughs) you know, toughen her up. And the only other thing is, well, like I, I get home and like, I have nothing to, I have no time and like, I have no time to shower and like, well, well, why don't you like structure your life a little better? I know this. I would have liked not hired you by talking because you're talking like you're 10. Like totally dude. Ugh, shut up. I'm so upset. Oh my God. Not to do my job at all. Oh my God. She's so upset. Yeah. Well, if she's upset, this has got to change. World needs to turn, turn a new leaf, man. Well, if she's upset, that's this, right. This has got to stop immediately because she's upset. That's right. But just like the nine to five schedule in general is crazy. Crazy. Being office nine to five, like if it was crazy. remote. It's fucking insane. It's crazy. It's only worked for what? Since when did that go into into play? The labor days of the 30s or Jimmy Hoffa era? (laughs) Like early Hoffa. (laughs) You know, but it's worked for all those years, but now it's a fucking problem. It's crazy. That's right. (laughs) Too funny, man. All right, here we go you get off at five and you're home and everything's fine but like i'm not home it takes me long to get home oh. and like like people that drive to the office like it doesn't you don't get off at five and i know it could be worse i know i could be working longer but like i literally get off it's pitch black like i don't oh. have energy how do you have friends like how do you have oh. time to like somehow all of us have always had friends <laughs> 
The last 65 years of people have had friends. <laughs> All of us work 50 to 60 hours a week, not fucking 40. Right. I don't think I ever had a 40 hour work week as a standard ever. <laughs> even when I was, even before I became a self employed guy, I don't think I ever had a 40 hour standard work week. I never have either. And I, and I got to tell you, as a young man, when I was, you know, in my early 20s, I was a diesel mechanic. And yeah. I, I know this would never translate on the uh, webcam. Mm -hmm. but, but if you could see my hands, my mm -hmm. hands are t totally scarred up. Sure. From all the, the work and, and bruises and the. Mm -hmm injuries that i that i acquired from yeah. turning wrenches mm -hmm. being a diesel mechanic as a kid as a young man and it's just like I, I look at my hands and they're all scarred up <laughs> yeah but she's a social media manager for a mid-level company nearly much more difficult all right much more difficult <laughs> You know, this whole thing about friends. Dude, you've been over here for several of the parties. Yes. I got a lot of fucking friends. <laughs> yes? Yeah, of course. Who fucking works more hours than me that you know? Not that I'm aware of. And yet somehow when I have a party, I have 150 fucking people show up at my dumb house. Right. It's, it's, it's possible, dear, that you can work 40 hours and still have friends. 40 It hours. is possible. I know that's a stretch. I know that's really reaching for it there. But 40 hours, you might be able to still have friends. Maybe. Idiot. All right, here we go. Me, like, a guy. I don't know. Like, how do you have time for, like, dating? Trust me. Unzip that, that dress, that thing that you're wearing. You'll meet a guy. Somebody will bang that pooter. That's right. Some guy, but guys will be lined up at your door That's right. with your parents home to say, I'm here to bang your daughter's. Mm -hmm. Just the further down you pull that zipper, the less time you got to spend. So if it's a time saving effort, <laughs> just open the zipper completely. Right. That's all you need to do. Turn, open the zipper completely. You won't have to waste any time finding there, a guy. There will be a guy out there ready to bang your pooter. Go out to the club that's nearest to your work, because I don't want you to spend any extra time getting to the right club. Whatever the nearest bar is next to your fucking work, go in there, take your shirt off. You won't have to waste any time <laughs> finding a guy. You will have a boyfriend in 3.6 seconds. Right. And he will love you long time. <laughs> idiot all right here we go eating like i don't have time for anything and oh. i'm like so stressed out and i'm also getting my period so oh that's that makes it even worse like am i so dramatic it's yes fine. yeah you are you are you're a moron you're a cunt you just really seem cunty <laughs> suck it up and even if you do feel this way, and I'm not saying she shouldn't feel this way. I fucking hate work sometimes too. I really do. I, there's, there's definitely times, there was times this week where I was just like, you know what? Fuck all these goddamn jobs. I'll just be fucking homeless. Cause I really got tired of everybody this week. Yeah, I can imagine, you know, and you know what? First thing I did wasn't run to social media. First thing I did, I said, you know what, guys? <laughs> Fuck pinball PA. I'm tired. Oh my God. I'm so tired and I'm stressed. And, Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shut up. Suck it up. Fucking. Ugh. <laughs> and your parents should be punched. Not you. I don't even have a problem with you being a whiny bitch. I have a problem with your parents. Yeah, I agree. Your parents should be pulling you. Should be like, why are you putting this shit on TikTok? Take that shit down and straighten up. That's what your parents should be saying. Because she gets sympathy for that. Yeah, enough with the sympathy. Fucking twat bag. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Well, before we get out of here. Yeah. And I and I know that you don't have Netflix anymore. Is I do not. I do right. not. Do you have access to Netflix? I do not, actually. 
Okay. I, thought I, mean, I guess I could up. sign up for it, but. Well I, well, I thought you had like a. No, I, I haven't even looked at how to pirate it. All right. Well, regardless of that, I have a lot of mixed feelings about Bill Burr as a mm -hmm. comedian because yeah. I just think, you know, obviously he knows how to play the game and not get canceled and still become, still be popular and make his money as a comedian, even though we know him from the O and a days as being very edgy. Right. But in today's environment, he can't be that way anymore. Mm -hmm. He's got a new movie out on Netflix, which I watched last night. Okay. Called old dads. Okay. And in this movie, he's 46 years old and basically is starting a family at 46. <sighs> okay. And he has the old school viewpoint like you and I, like he has no problem saying somebody just like what we just did two seconds ago. Yeah calling somebody uh you are just nothing but a cunt right okay <laughs> but of course that doesn't that doesn't fly in today's vernacular no and as a husband of a younger wife who is banging out one of his or couple of his kids mm -hmm. he is like outdated and everybody looks at him with great disdain it's okay like, Oh, you, you said cut. Oh, oh my God. God. You know, and it's one of those. And I have mixed thoughts on Bill Burr because I know he can be funny and I know he gets it, but he won't do it because he knows what makes him money and what will get him canceled and what mm -hmm. will, will embrace him in today's society. Yeah. So in this movie, Old Dads, mm -hmm. he kind of straddles the line between the quote unquote, the old school, which I'm going to say you and I are on okay, and the side of the fucking cuck on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> and he kind of straddles the line pretty good in this movie. All right. Where he is... Uh, portrays the old school guy who has no filter on what he says, but on the other hand, he sort of wavers and goes across the line and says, I understand my transgressions and I hope you will forgive me. <laughs> oh, good. So I'm not sure how to you know i'm not sure how to think about this but, sure but it's a movie i think you need to see all right i'll have to because you kind of look at it and go way to go bill and on the other hand you go fuck you dude you know, <laughs> know better than this i'll have to scavenge a netflix account yeah so if you want to see one of these movies and it actually just kind of pissed me off i i would <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Taylor is kind of my sounding board because she's a younger person who's on sure. the other side of the spectrum, but she gets it. Yeah. And I kind of texted her last night about it, but I was just like in a state of just like, holy fuck, we are fucked as a society. Oh, yeah. Because he did a good job of straddling the line. Right. Because you're just like, is Bill Burr still one of us or is he a fucking cuck? Yeah, he's he's you, you're not sure if he sold out or not. Yeah. So I'm thinking that he knows the difference between what's good and what's bad and uh, knows what will get him canceled because obviously Bill Burr makes a lot of money. Sure. Doing what he does, but uh, he'll sacrifice his values mm -hmm. make that money but you know he'll play the game just to keep that money flow but he won't stand up for his values at the same time well he's a phony yeah mm -hmm. i mean really that's what it boils down to. typical hollywood phony of course so so if you want to watch a 
guy who kind of knows better and probably would say what's on his mind, but be, but because he's on the gravy train, he won't. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting movie. Old dads on Netflix. All right. I'll have to, I'll have to scavenge a, a Netflix account to watch I it. Your, I thought your mom had like a library account or some shit. She I, I, it, it they, we, they started with that stupid password share bullshit. And instead of trying to finagle it, I just was like, I barely watch Netflix anyway. So I just took it off my fucking TV. All right. Well, I get it. But I, and again, I did watch a good documentary. It was like a three part series this week. Uh, yeah. Gotti, get gaudy. Right. It just was released. And it, that's pretty damn good too. That's cool. Yeah. I watched, um, what was I? I watched uh, on Eddie Trunk's um, referral. I watched the Millie Vanilli documentary on um, Paramount Plus. Okay, that must have made Eddie's fucking head explode. <laughs> Mister right. fucking can't use tracks. All right, it, you know, Fair it really was kind of sad. I will say that it was pretty sad seeing. I just might watch that when we get off the show tonight. It's 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 well worth the watch, but it's um. It's quite sad that these guys were literally run out of the business for doing what everybody does now. I agree. It's it's really sad. I will probably watch that when we end the show tonight. Well, then let's get you to watching because I'm I'm ready to go. All right. Well, since we're talking about money and all that good shit, mm -hmm. I'm going to end the show with a classic ACDC song from Back in Black. Okay. What do you do for money, honey? Yeah. But uh, we want to thank our good friend John Levin from Dockin for joining us tonight. Uh, yes. Pick up the new release, Heaven Comes Down, if you'd like a more mature Dockin record. And mm -hmm. Yes, I'm shilling the Dockin record, you faggots, over on the <laughs> Facebook CMS fan page, you cocksuckers. <laughs> That's what I think of you, bitches. So nice. suck my dick dick hey language yeah. family show i don't give a shit but anyway we're gonna get out of here we'll be back next saturday we'll do this thing all over again so until next saturday this is neely along with my very good friend chris Egan. we're gone bye kids see ya <laughs>